Flobo Boyce is my next guest, and he is the author of Graduation Day, Life Lessons from the Real World. Flobo has a message for your graduate or for you upcoming 2022 graduates. Stay tuned for all of his golden nuggets. All right, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for inviting me. Thanks for bringing me on. Appreciate you. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Well, excited to talk to you today. Um, graduation season is coming up, and uh, certainly your book would be a great gift for uh, college graduates. And wanted to see what your opinion was. Uh, you get to give the college graduates an after uh, the school experience in your memoir which is called Graduation Day, Life Lessons from the Real World. Yay! <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> yeah, it was it was an interesting trip and, and ride, you know. When I when I graduated college, I, I thought I had all the tools to take on the world, and you realize very quickly that you don't. And uh, during the time uh, with the pandemic and having more time with myself, especially since everything I do out elsewhere, I'll probably get into it later, revolves around people. Like I, I'm a performer, yeah. maintaining around people. So I had time at home and I said, what advice would I give others in my situation who had thought they had a path clearly lined up? I'm going to go to college and I'm going to do this. And this became something completely different. Well, I'm going to tell you, um, Flobo, I think everybody kind of discovers that. Not everybody puts it in a book. So, <laughs> so maybe yeah. you'll be able to help a lot of people. But yes, I remember when um, back in uh, 13 BC, after I graduated from college, <laughs> <laughs> and thought the very same thing. But uh, so, so it, your inspiration was your experience to write yeah. the book. Yeah, uh, that's kind of the main thing. I, I think a lot of us, and by us, I mean uh, people of color or my parents were immigrants uh, come to this country. The idea was to go to school and get a good job. And, yeah. and so I got the degree paper in my hand, looking to get a good job, whatever my career yeah. is going to be. The goal was I'm going to work for this company. And right. I certainly learned that it, there's more than one path to that. Life isn't a straight line. You can work for yourself. You can work with others. You can build empires of your own. Uh, you can take some failures and really apply that. Not People say learn from your mistakes, but in the book, I go through actual specific failures and how I found a way to flip that, if you will, to uh, to more positive experience after thereafter. Got you. Got you. Well, let's digress just a little bit. What college did you graduate from? Yeah, the first time I graduated from Flagler College in St. Augustine, Florida, uh, with oh, yeah. uh, b bachelor's in communication, okay. which is what this book is about. It starts off with my Flagler College degree, but I eventually went to film school at Chapman University in Orange County for my film degree. Uh, it's a master's of fine art in editing or film okay. production with emphasis in editing. Okay, yeah. okay. And you you said your parents were immigrants. What country? Uh, Barbados. They came out Barbados. in the 70s, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's the home of Rihanna and uh, Eric Holder, the attorney general. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, the, Rihanna is now officially a national hero. <laughs> which is I saw mind. that. Yeah. I saw that. Uh, so yeah. Yay. <laughs> She's having a thing up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so, okay. So now that we have that, and I hear that a lot, whether I'm reading stories about uh, fictional stories or true stories from immigrant uh, person who's a child of immigrant parents. You know, they strive and really preach the education piece. And sometimes that doesn't give the child a sense of freedom and flexibility for what life is going to throw them because their parents want them to be on that very strict and narrow path. Right. So um, how did your parents feel about your 
you know. Well, to take a step back, I mean, it's it's hard to, to come up with or think what success is going to be in a different country, right? Like, I, I understand sure. that now as an adult, but growing yeah. up, it does become very linear, right? Doctor, lawyer, I don't know, mm -hmm. vigilante. I'm kidding. With the last one. <laughs> uh, so when I, when I decided to do the first time, I had a, I was in high school. In high school, this from some backstory, I had a finance major, or they call it a okay. house system. So I was going to be in finance, and then when I decided to go to college for uh, production or communication production to make videos at the time. Uh, that was a little kind of a cause for pause there. Parents were kind of like, Hey, look, it's undergrad, try it. And if it doesn't work out, there's always business to fall back on, which All is another right. fallacy. Cause I know so many business majors are unemployed, but everyone yeah. says get business to fall back on. And so when I graduated undergrad and I wanted to, to go to film school to answer your question, um, uh, my mom was like, I don't know what the hell film editing is. But if there's something you want to do, go ahead. Because when she was younger, there was opportunities for women in the Caribbean, right? She wanted to do uh, not nursing, but to leave that island. You could be a teacher. You could have been a nurse. And I was pretty much it as far as being able to give yourself yeah. uh, as, mm -hmm. as like, like agriculture or anything. And uh, yeah. my dad, <clears throat> he was like, no, are you nuts? He was an electrical engineer. Yeah. He worked for the New York Transit Authority, like math and science was his thing. And, yeah. he, and I had an argument about what I wanted and what he wanted to do. Uh, right. And the only reason I got the blessing, I guess, was saying, hey, look, editing uh, has to be done on computers and computers yeah. are something that you want me to learn. Yes, you, yes. you came to this country at $22, 22 at $500 in your pocket, you always say, uh, give me a chance to explore the other side of my actual home country. And so right. it was like a, what do you call like a begrudging blessing <laughs> when I got in the car and I rolled out west uh, to Chapman University. Wow, you know, that was a good argument that you did for your dad. Hey, it's on computers. <laughs> but hey, you know, that was very good, very good. Okay, so now your book, Graduation Day, um, it's divided into three parts, am I right? Yeah, three major parts, uh, but then there's like chapter stories underneath those. Yes, yes, so it's like going for it, fitting in, and you are the CEO. Well, really four parts in, in closing. So let's let's take a look at a chapter under uh, going forward. Going mm -hmm. for it, excuse me. Mm -hmm. So uh, the following contest is scheduled for one fall, dot, dot, dot. Tell us a little bit about that chapter. Oh, I'm a firm believer. I actually say in the back of the book uh, on, the, on the author matter that everything I learned in life, I learned from professional wrestling. And I've been a fan since I was oh. a kid uh, with my dad watching with me. And his thing is when he came to this country in the 70s, uh, the matter, everyone looks at you differently from different countries, different whatever. But when you go to a wrestling event, everyone doesn't care about you so much. They care about what's happening in the ring. So he felt like way more American cheering on people fighting in the middle of the ring. So when I was a kid, I used to watch it very, very young and I became a big fan of it. So much for when I graduated grad school and that down period of, I thought jobs were to come at me hand over fist. I'm unemployed after school. Yeah. Where do I go? Yeah. Uh, I was watching some old wrestling tapes and I said, you know what? I'm gonna find a way to get work in this industry just to try it out. And that was the first jump for me. Something I loved that was passionate about, but kind of a leisurely hobby saying, how can I work in there? Um, but right. then doing that eventually got me with an organization because I hounded them week after week. Every week I went down to the their weekly fight nights and go, hey, can I help? Hey, can I help? Hey, can I help? Right. And they're like, finally, fine, whatever. But that opened <laughs> the doors for me to be a commentator, a ring announcer. And there's things I'm working on to this day. People go, oh, man, you sound like you're a good broadcaster. And I was like, well, when you're projecting – to 20 people <laughs> who bought tickets to this wrestling event and they're like on their phones and they're yelling and they're they're drinking and you're like yeah. the next contest is you learn right. about stage presence you learn about interacting with the audience you learn, you learn about more importantly if one person buys a ticket you have to give them the whole show you can't be yeah. like well hey only one person's here next contest is this guy you know you gotta be like welcome to the big wrestling event right you no know, it's yeah. like someone's grandma <laughs> in the crowd <laughs> So, yeah. Oh, wow. 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 Okay. Okay. And let's see. Now, I've got to, I've got to ask you this. I'm still undergoing for it. The ballot of Alone in the Club. Yeah. About that. Yeah. You know, okay. So, so stand up comedian guy, Flobito, me, uh, was basically told by the world in 2020, you are non essential. Stay home. Right. And so a lot of creatives, 
how to go through that crisis of you dedicating yourself to something but you consider to be non-essential. Not saying that I'm more important than a nurse or a doctor, but it's still kind of uh, stressful. But I remember the first week of the shutdown where uh, there was a mad dash to go to the grocery stores to stock up on things. And I didn't know what to get because I wasn't prepared. And I was broke. I had like $200 like to my name. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm buying like all the food for weeks and weeks, but you know, there's only much you can buy when you have no money. So it's like, you right. know, canned sausages and anchovies uh, and, and ramen and just all this terrible food. And I locked in because back then we didn't know what COVID was. We didn't know if it was in the air. We didn't know if it was like right. on surfaces. And so right. I'm, I'm looking around, one, a, a comedian who can't work, but then looking around my room being like, I got food and booze for days. I hate it. Uh, I have all the Netflix I can watch, but I can't talk to anyone about it because I'm basically by myself, right? Like I'm on this couch and, and nothing's happening. I feel like I'm in the VIP section of a club that isn't open yet. So, <laughs> so Alone in the Club was basically a, a comedy song about a guy that breaks into a club at 7.30 in the evening and is bragging about it. Like, oh, I'm in VIP right now. Where y'all at, bro? <laughs> and and it was the dumbest thing I've ever done. Uh, and I released it to Spotify and all that. And everyone was like, oh man, this song was really good. <laughs> that was my way of having a pandemic song without saying the pandemic, right? Because uh, I didn't know if it was going to be funny uh, three months or four months after the fact. So the right. idea was, this, you know, I'm going to make it like a hip hop Latin beat. Like, yeah, bro, <laughs> I'm living large kind of a thing. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. I will not sidebar to the pandemic but oh my god mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that's all i can say about that i will not go into that okay, Crazy so. times. <laughs> <laughs> well fitting in and that's that's something a lot of people when you just hear that phrase fitting in have a lot um of trouble doing uh depending on what that fit is mm -hmm. so let's talk about the great roller coaster yeah so a little bit of backstory. I was a fat kid and mostly a fat adult. Um, and, and I was a heavy guy and, and good thing for me, I was able to, to lose 150 pounds uh, just wow. working on myself. Uh, the first 80 pounds came from actual Subway sandwiches. So I am a Subway diet <laughs> graduate. But, but even though I was, even though in, in the West Indies and, and, and even in the South and even in, in Europe, people tease you for being big. Like, how big are you going to get? It didn't really hit me that I lived in a world that wasn't built for me until I went to an amusement park on my fourth, my eighth grade, like, senior trip. So I'm at Six yeah. Flags Great Adventure, which is the one in Jersey. And okay. I, I was kicked off of the runaway mime train because I was too heavy. And that was, like, the first sign of, oh, my gosh, I am different. And so from 14 wow. till about... Uh, 2022. Uh, I was on in this like other lane. Like I was in, I was in America, but and, and yeah. I was also, but I was also like, hey, look, it's not. You're not built for the seats, the turnstiles. I tell people if you invite me to Disneyland, um, people worry about their money and their wallet and their goofy hat and they go. I worry yeah. about my sweat towel, where the chairs, if I can take breaks, that doesn't yeah. slow down the group. And I was in my early 20s. Uh, yeah. So. One day I decided, and I won't forget, I celebrate every year, February 26, 2009. Uh, I, I went to an all night gym. Uh, that way I couldn't blame the gym for being closed. And I just right. did workouts 10 minutes, 20 minutes a day. And I didn't tell anybody because I don't know if, right. you, if you struggle with weight in your life. There's many times you start something and you quit. And I was like, what happened? And you're like, oh, well, yeah. uh, you yeah. know, so I just went at night. I wore the most, most baggies clothes, didn't tell anyone. And that was right. kind of like the brick by brick, uh, bringing that weight loss down. And so to make this full circle, when I got, I lost that first 150 pounds, I was with some friends in Vegas and, and Las Vegas has the roller coaster at the New York, New York casino. It's called yeah, the roller coaster at New York, New York. And I was yeah, like, yeah. I'm going to do it. Now, if you got to go on a roller coaster, don't do it. Cause it's like a $20 ticket. But, but I was like, no, I'm going to see if I can do it. I can fit. And, uh, it was, became this thing, like this, like tense thing. That I was on the line for a roller coaster, scared not because of the roller coaster, right. but where I can fit in the chair. And wow. so when I did, I was like, you could my friend saw so my face. I was like relieved. I was like, oh great. Now let's start the show. So it became like this like bookend thing to my weight yeah. loss journey. If I was able to lose that weight. Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. It's so many things that um one can be afraid of. And, and that's something I never thought about. And then 
It's the reactions of people. Say, for an example, the person that's got to tell you to get off the roller coaster, you know, how are they telling you? It, 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 could, it could shatter your whole psyche for decades just mm -hmm. by the way somebody might tell you, oh, you know, get, get off the roller coaster, you're too big. You know, right. just you know how they deliver the information can shatter your psyche. So, but good for you. Good for I, you. Because I, I never thought of something like that, but that's definitely. You know, so what would you what would you tell a graduate to get from that experience? Oh yeah. So well, first of all, I my heaviest. I was a size six extra large shirt and I was a size fifty six inch waist pants, right? So being uh, able to buy clothes off the rack was like I almost cried I was in Walmart. Because Walmart gives you like big sizes. I was like, Oh, I can buy things off the rack. But but the, yeah. the main lesson is that uh some people always tell you uh, when you're in school at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Right. And that That is not incorrect. I'm not trying to say don't do that. <laughs> first right. you say give up. But right. but sometimes it's not as cut and dry as try again. Sometimes you sure. have to stop, reevaluate, rebuild, come at a different angle completely uh, and yeah. then try. So right. I, I've tried the drinks and the creams and all that stuff. And I tried going to the gym and, and, and going extra hard, which is a big mistake. And then you get injured and you go, oh, I get injured. Or, oh, I get sick because there's a shock to the body. And then you don't yeah. go in again and it goes back. Uh, but it was a slow, steady, just basically a shift of my daily day, day structure was caused me to succeed this time. And it won't happen all the time, but there's going to be some big problems you come across where you have to say, what am I doing wrong as a person and how can I adapt and upgrade to, to take this challenge? Most definitely. Most definitely. Great advice there. Great advice. So you are the CEO. Mm -hmm. the, <laughs> there's two chapters under that. The rise and fall and rise of new K N E W. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so talk about that. Oh man, how much time do you got, Deidre? No. I got time. <laughs> time. So I by this time I'm like full bore into being a stand-up comedian, and and I'm going to shows and stuff like that, and I realize I've created people like myself or even rappers or poets, even though we have our phones and we have digital apps, a lot of people like to write their notes and their book. And so I said, I have an idea for a stationary company. Um, I actually have one of the books here. Uh, I don't know if you can, if it's your visual podcast, uh, it's yes, right here. Yes. And it has like the KA, New Amsterdam. Yeah. And the idea yeah. of that was uh, we're going to basically have a city for creatives like you would have the city of New Amsterdam, which was a town that was sold to the, the, the Dutch from the Native American. Right. The island mentioned is New Amsterdam. Why right. is it K? I explain it in the book, but basically it's a pursuit of knowledge and it's good for SEO. So it's K N E W. <laughs> um, and it was the, the plan was it's a new company. I had this cushy job at the time. This day job was overpaying me. It's called Golden Handcuffs. Look it up. It sucks. Uh, I, I was going to siphon off my extra cash into this business yeah. um, and, and to really build it up. And I got let go on Thanksgiving Day, 2017, which is another chapter in the book of how this happens. And so <laughs> my finance plan dries up. So yeah. I know you can start a business and be instantly successful. But now I have all the stock because I bought the stock up front because it'd be cheaper that way from, from China. But it was still good quality stock, by the way. But right. it, still, it was still it was still had to buy the stock from China. So I couldn't send it back. I couldn't charge it back. Right. And I'm right. trying to make this company work, and I just can't because I can't pay for advertising. I can't get the word out. Can't yeah. do pop up shop. And eventually, right. withers and dies. Uh, a year later or so, I close the website down. I give away the books to Goodwill, and it was the most saddest thing ever. I was like, "Here's 400 books." They're like, "You want a receipt?" I was like, ah, yeah. <laughs> like this is oh, my dream. No. No. Uh, <laughs> but but I realized with the pandemic, I'm sitting at home and I had my DJ business, which was on hiatus, my spoken word, my my keynote speaking, excuse me, all my podcasts I was building on at seven podcasts. And I wanted to organize a company to be one to be eligible for small business loans, right? But yes. two to really, really put a stamp of what I'm doing now. I'm not just randomly doing things. This is a process. I'm at meetings early. I'm working on content. I'm doing things to make this brand kick. And so right. I just said, hey, look, I have the URL. Let's call it New Amsterdam 
entertainment. So that was the rise again. And ever mm -hmm. since then, if you go to newamsterdam.com, it lists all the shows I host. Um, every podcast is a production of New Amsterdam Entertainment. My DJ business is charged with New Amsterdam Entertainment. It really was a pandemic like focus on this business, but it basically was the ashes of something that had failed spectacularly. Yeah. People always say, hey, make it yeah. something new. I'm like, no, I wanted people to know that this was a book company. Nintendo yeah. sold playing cards. This is a book company, but now right. it's an independent entertainment company wow yes 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 i'm very i am very familiar with that process uh the rise and fall and the rise again uh you're you're 100 right and i'm thinking that's one of the most important things that anybody can learn college graduates middle-aged people whoever mm -hmm. um you know, something will rise, it, then it could fall off, and then you got to maybe reshape it and reformat it and so that it can mm -hmm. rise again. You know, don't give up. Basically, that's what that falls under. So, yeah, I'm very familiar with that pattern of life. Kind of, sort of, that's just the general pattern of life, isn't it? <laughs> true, 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 true. Yeah, stuff, very much you know, so. goes well for a while and then falls off. Just like the job you described, you, you had this golden job that was overpaying you, you were saying, mm -hmm. yeah. and then it drops off. And then not only does it drop off, it drops off on Thanksgiving Day. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I mean, I, I don't want to spoil the book, but yeah, I was I was in Vegas celebrating yeah. Thanksgiving because I because I, I had the money. It was it was they basically and I, not to like to, to brag about it, but my job basically you made X amount range. They're paying me X plus thirty five. So I had money to burn. So I'm sitting yeah. there in this luxury room, like I actually made it. See that, ma? And then I didn't get fired on Thanksgiving Day. Accounts payable calls me and they go, "Hey, we're looking to confirm the address for your 401k disbursement." I'm like, why am I disbursing my what? 401k? Uh, <laughs> oh <laughs> call me back. Because my boss was off that day because it was a holiday. But the, the accounts payable where I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Oh, my Lord. Oh, so, God. Yeah, that was pretty much started everything. Wow, wow. Well, well, certainly these are no spoilers. There's plenty of more golden nuggets in your book because we, of course, didn't cover every chapter. So mm -hmm. definitely one has to buy it to read the entire story to get the whole comprehensive graduation day experience. So definitely that's what folks need to do. Absolutely. So let, just let's go back to this. So right now you are doing what? Wow, uh, a lot. <laughs> uh, so, so stand up comedy is coming back. Uh, that's kind of fun to do that and, and be able to connect with an audience day to day. I am a content creator, much like yourself. Uh, yeah. but I work on podcasts with a comedic flair. So, I cover professional wrestling, but I do it with jokes. I do Star yeah. Trek with jokes. <laughs> I have hey. a Netflix show where I review uh, some of the original Netflix originals. Um, that's like the main podcasting thing. And I'm also a wedding DJ in the Southern okay. California area. Uh, DJ Flobito, flobito.com. That's F-L-O-B-I-T-O.com. I go from, from San Luis Obispo to the Mexican border, doing weddings, events, bar mitzvahs. I'm also into esports, which is basically, if you're not familiar with that, to your listeners, they're, they're professional video games. Basically, people who are play these games are athletes, and they go to arenas, and they play the game, and we all cheer in the stands. Uh, oh. They have their own commentators. I'm, I'm doing that as well uh, for a game called Rocket League. So I go, oh, he's coming up the field, and what a shot, what a goal. Like, that kind of thing as well. So I tell my mom, she goes, you do a lot. But I go, I am glad and I am fortunate to, one, be myself. You can yes. Google Flobo voice and it comes up to everything. And yes. two, I'm the instrument. Yes, it's hard yes. work, but I'm not like ripping muscles, like having a sledgehammer. My, my grandparents right. on my mom's side cut right. sugar cane for a living yeah. because yeah. they made rum, right? So imagine right. that. Out yeah. in the fields, 85 degrees, just cutting... A sugar cane, and I'm get to sit in my chair and do podcasts or right. go in an arena and say, What a great video game move you just did! Right, <laughs> right. Um, do you get to, it's called the good tired, right? When people say it's not right. work, it's, it's work yeah. to me, it's work, but I go to bed being I feel refreshed, like, Ah, what a exactly. day of progress! You know? Exactly, exactly. Um, outside of being a content creator, I own a healthcare business with my oh, husband, right. and so with that, you know, to say all of that just like you said, we get to be ourselves and, you know, we get to direct our own life. Mm -hmm. So that, that in and of itself 
is an awesome feeling and an awesome thing to think about as a college graduate. Pick something, choose something, do something that speaks to you, you know, and how you want to be, how you want to live. Definitely. I agree. Absolutely. And there's the pandemic did teach me that, and I don't want to do doom and gloom or anything, And I, but I mentioned it before, there is no such thing as falling back on something. Like if you right. want to get a second or third degree for your own benefit, great. Knowledge is a pursuit that you can always go for. But don't be like, I really want to be a painter, but I want to fall back on his law degree. I know plenty of lawyers who can't find work. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, Flobo, you certainly have a lot to say to not only graduates, but to all types of people. I really enjoyed talking to you today. Give Thank us you. some shout outs of your social media handles and yeah. repeat that the website again for us, please. Yeah, well, there's two websites. A personal website is flowbito.com. That's F L O B I T O.com. The business is called New Amsterdam Entertainment. Learn more at newamsterdam.com. That's K N E W Amsterdam.com and at New Amsterdam on that Instagram. The book is called Graduation Day. Life Lessons from the Real World. Uh, people always ask what my favorite chapter is. I have no favorites, but the Italian job where I decided to basically gamble my business to do a wedding in Italy is everyone's favorite. Make sure you pick up a copy at Amazon.com because I'll do whatever it takes to make sure I succeed, baby. Uh, and also, oh, I can't believe I can't this. Today is, uh, as I record this, my dad's birthday. Shout out, dad. I uh, appreciate you. Happy birthday. I, know, I, I call you old man, but I do add a love. <laughs> Happy birthday, man. Mr. Boy. (laughs) Wow. Well, thank you for that. And all of your information will be down below of the video that will be on YouTube and a part of the show notes if you're listening to the podcast. So we've got you covered, Flobo. And thank you so much for coming and talking to me today. I appreciate you. I appreciate you as well. Thanks. Thank you for joining the Bookaholic Podcast. We appreciate your support. Remember to subscribe to the podcast. Follow us on Instagram at TrueBookaholic. You can also email us at readingjunkie at book-a-holic.com. Don't forget to support your local library and independent bookstores.